Understanding ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance. Hi, I'm Dr Nick, and in this video I'm going to tell you about Analysis of Variance, or ANOVA. Before we start, please like this video, comment below, subscribe, but most of all join the channel. Help it grow and help me help more and more people like you. Analysis of Variance is used to compare means. When we compare two means, we generally use a t-test for the difference of two means. But when we have more than two groups that we are comparing, we need to use ANOVA. We calculate the variation within each of the groups and compare it with the variation between the groups. This is usually done using a computer program. The f-statistic is calculated, which is compared with the f-distribution, and from that the computer provides a p-value. Here is an example based on real data about people's annual incomes and qualifications. For each person, we have data about their level of qualification and their annual household income. We would expect there to be a difference in income depending on level of qualification. Remember, always graph the data. I have used Excel to create comparative box and whisker plots for the different qualification groups. This helps us to see what is happening in this sample. You can see that in the sample, people with degrees tended to earn more than those without degrees. The other means look similar to each other. There is considerable overlap between the groups as well. The respective sample means are shown in the table. These are all different values. We want to find out if this difference in the sample is evidence of difference in the population from which the sample is drawn. We need to know whether we have evidence that a difference of means between the groups also exists in the population from which the sample is drawn. Do we have a statistically significant result, or could this difference of means have occurred by chance or sampling variation? Our null hypothesis is that the population means of the four groups are equal. Remember that hypotheses are always about the population parameters. H0 is mu nun equals mu school equals mu vocational equals mu degree. The means of the four groups are the same. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of the means is different from the others. Note that the alternative hypothesis is not that all the means are different, but rather that they are not all the same. Clearly, the means in the sample are different. What we want to know is if that difference is likely to happen simply by sampling variation, by chance, or is there evidence that there is a difference in the means between the groups in the population from which the data is drawn. We use one-way or single-factor analysis of variance to find the f-statistic and the associated p-value. This output from Excel shows that the f-value rounds to 15.5 and that the p-value is 2.17e-09. This rather unusual looking number means 2.17 times 10 to the power of negative 9, which is 0.000000000217, which is pretty much 0. The same analysis using JASP yields the same f-statistics, as it should. The p-value here is given as less than 0.001, which is another way of saying a number close to zero. This is a very small p-value. In our videos, Understanding the p-value and Understanding Hypothesis Tests, we introduce the idea that p is low, null must go. In this instance, we reject the null hypothesis that the means in the population are all the same. We have evidence that at least one of the means is different from one of the other means. We would then use a post hoc test, which means afterwards, such as a Tukey test, to determine which pairs of means show significant difference. Excel does not do this analysis, but here is the output from JASP, which is similar to what you would see from programs such as SPSS. This shows that all the pairs of means show statistically significant differences, except for the groups for school and vocational qualification. These do not have evidence of having different means. When we get a p-value that is less than the specified level of significance, we declare that the result is statistically significant. There are some assumptions underlying the ANOVA test. The samples must be independent. In this case, the entire sample was made up of 300 independent individuals, so the samples are independent. 
Other assumptions are that the data is well modelled by a normal distribution and that the variances of the different groups are the same. So long as the groups are about the same size, the different variances are less of a problem. If the assumptions are badly violated, then we would need to use a non-parametric test known as the Kruskal-Wallis test. This sample does show some violation of assumptions. The variances are quite different and the group sizes are also quite different. So it would be prudent to use a Kruskal-Wallis. You can see from the output that the result is also statistically significant when using the non-parametric test Kruskal-Wallis. In my experience, the non-parametric and the parametric tests just about always give the same result, but it is good to be thorough. This video explained what one way ANOVA does and how to interpret the output. Let me know what more you would like in the comments below. Please like this video, subscribe, but most of all join the channel, especially if you are using our videos in your teaching. Help the channel grow and help me help more and more people like you.